Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to part three, uh, continuing with our reflections of the Fatiha. So now we are at verse five. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. So reflections here, we notice the construction is Iyaka na'budu. You we worship. And I'll get back to this translation here, which is really beautiful. Iyaka na'budu. You are the one we worship. Wa iyaka nasta'in. And you are the one that we ask for help. So the construction in Arabic, you notice that when we translate it into English, that's not how we normally speak English. We don't say you we ask for help we say we ask you for help we don't say you we worship we say we worship you the reason that the construction is like this in arabic and god knows best is when we bring out the you in front that is where the focus is if we say we worship you the focus here is on us we are the ones who are doing the worship. We are kind of primary in that sentence. But when we say you are the one we worship, so number one, the focus becomes on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is the primary. Probably even more important than that is that this construction is known as uslub al-hasr wal-qasr. What does that mean? It means it is a construction of exclusivity. Because when I say we worship you, yes, maybe we worship you and then we also worship this other God and this third God and fourth God. But if we say you are the one we worship and we use it with iyaka, iyaka na'budu, it is this Arabic construction of exclusivity. You alone are the one we worship. And that is why I love this translation uh, where the alone here is put in, in, in little brackets or quotes because there's no word in the Arabic for alone, but it is understood when we bring the object of the verb iyaka up front and then the verb afterwards, you are the one that we worship. Uh, it is putting the focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is making this construction um, of exclusivity that you alone are the one we worship. We do not worship anyone else and you are the primary and then we worship you. Um, and this object before the verb is not really a common construction even in Arabic. It's unusual even in Arabic. We see it in the Quran, for example, وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ Glorify your Lord. Uh, but again, Rabbaka comes up front, your Lord, glorify, or extol, or magnify. Um, so it is a beautiful construction, really, a very eloquent, a lot of meaning in, in the way it is put here. Same thing, you are the one, you alone are the one we ask for help. No one else has power. No one else has authority. No one else has the capacity uh, to to help us. And uh, so in just the simple twist of the construction, uh, we, we uh, see that uh, present. And then, iyaka na'budu. You alone, we worship. It's not iyaka a'budu. It's not you alone, I worship. It's we worship. And we ask for help. So we see this collective sense in the Fatiha that automatically our mind is transported to the notion that we are a community of believers. This is not each man for himself. It is a community of believers and we are part of that community. And we will see that again when we get to Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. Guide us to the straight path. It is not guide me and then who cares about everybody else. No, it is 
guide all of us. We all worry about each other. I care about my guidance. I care about your guidance. Uh, and reciprocally, you care uh, for me as well as caring for yourself. So that again, just a very beautiful, simple construction that it's not Iyaka Abudu, it's Iyaka Abudu, brings across this uh, amazing uh, set of, of meanings. And now I wanted to just uh, reflect on something. This is really entirely my own reflection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Uh, but when I look at Iyaka Abudu wa Iyaka Nasta'in, in the context of the prior verses, you are the one we worship you are the one we ask for help exclusively, alone. Both of these are exclusive to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, I think that the construction that has come before this is what I refer to as a mercy sandwich. Mercy, ultimate mercy, sandwiched between two leaves of power. First, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. All praise to Allah the Lord of the worlds. That is power. Then Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, we've already talked about the expression of ultimate mercy. Then Malik Yawm din the owner or the Lord of the Day of Judgment, again power. So I have mercy in between two leaves of power. And when I am exclusively worshipping someone, I am worshipping both of those attributes the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but that that power is expressed through his mercy. Um, and that it is not astaghfirullah power that, that is abused in any sort of way or, or a tyrannical power, astaghfirullah. No, it is, it is this mercy sandwich um, where the 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 inner part the the essence uh, is the mercy of rahman al rahim and the two sort of outer leaves are the power and then what astain and you alone we ask for help well if i'm going to ask someone for help what what do i need i have to ask first someone who is able to help because it does me no good to ask someone who has no capacity to help me and then someone who will want to help. So the ability to help is the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, uh, the care to help, the sympathy, the mercy uh, that is needed to want to help, that is the, the mercy part of, of, of the sandwich. So when I think about iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in, I think about it in the context of what has come before um, and I don't mean in any way to be astaghfirullah glib, but uh, the, the pithiest way I can, I can think of putting it is this mercy sandwich. Um, and we can see how both the, the worship part uh, and the servitude aspect of the worship, as well as asking for help, uh, both of those attributes or both of those parts, the power and the mercy, are integral to uh, our mindset uh, as, as, as we uh, exclusively worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as we exclusively ask him for help. Okay, so now we are at verse 6. اِهْدِنَ السِّرَاطَ mustaqim. Guide us along the straight path. So اِهْدِنَ, we've already talked about, guide all of us. We've already mentioned that. In, in the last verse, not just guide me, it's not ihdini, guide me to the straight path. It is guide us uh, along the straight path. And again, I love this translation because we will often see this translated as guide us to the straight path. Al mustaqim is straight, as sirat is, um, is uh, the path. But here it is ihdina, as sirat al mustaqim. And the first reflection I want to point out is that if you or I were writing Arabic, we would probably write Ihdina ila sirat al-mustaqim, guide us to the straight path. 
but the Quran doesn't do that. It says, guide us the straight path. There's no ila, there's no two. Why is that? Well, some have said, and God knows best, that the implication here is, well, let me give an example. If I tell you um, what is the way to, you know, Vons, you can say, well, you go down this street uh, for uh, three blocks, then you make a right, and then go uh, to the traffic light, then a stop sign, then you make a left, and you've given me directions how to get to Vons. The other way to do it is say, you know, what's the way to Vons? And you say, come here, I'll take you. I'm going, I'll take you. And I take you right to Vons. So, Ihdina ila sirat al mustaqim would be um, give me directions how to get there. But then I may make it, I may not, I may get lost along the way. We're not asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. We're asking Him, take us there. Don't guide us to it, take us, put us on it. And that's why I love this translation because often you'll see it translated as guide us to the straight path, but it's really guide us along the straight path, put us right on the straight path. Uh, and that again is, is a beautiful, beautiful economy, a phrase that has a tremendous amount of meaning to it. I am asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for more than the set of directions to the straight path because I don't trust myself that I will make it. I'm saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please put me on the straight path. Just take me and put me right there. Now, a sirata. A sirata, we, we translate it as path. I just want to reflect that in Arabic, it comes from the verb sarata. Sarata means he swallowed up. And the, the connotation here is that this path is so big, so broad, so wide, that it swallows people up. Um, it is not some narrow road, the way sometimes people make Islam out to be, that it is this very narrow construction, and that if you see things in any way different, you are off the path. No, a sirat is the road that is wide enough to accommodate so many, so many opinions, so many approaches, so many points of view, uh, but it should be the straight path. There are, of course, things that are off even a path as wide as a sirat, so we want a sirat al-mustaqim, the, the straight path. Um, and then so many of the, of the other things flesh out what that straight path is in the Qur'an. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Those who believe and do righteous deeds. الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ Those who establish prayer and give zakah and so on. All of that would fall under as sirat al-mustaqim. But those are the reflections that I wanted to uh, share uh, regarding uh, this, this verse. Okay, finally we are at verse 7. And before we launch here, remember I had said uh, that there is um, a, a uh, difference of opinion uh, among the, the major schools of thought as to whether Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is a verse in Surah Al-Fatiha or, or not, if it, is it just a separator that we use between surahs uh, except, of course, for Surah at tawbah uh, that, that we don't recite Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim before the beginning of that. Uh, so if you are someone who feels that uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is the first verse, that's wonderful, then this is verse number seven. But let's say you feel that Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is not verse number one, Yet the Qur'an talks about the Fatha as as sab al mathani the seven oft-recited verses. Now you're one verse short. So now it would be six verses. Because verse one would be Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. And so what, what do we do now? Well, the, in that case, the interpretation is that what we're looking at here 
is actually two verses. That Sirat al Ladina and Amta Alayhim would be one verse, then Ghayri al Maghdubi Alayhim wal al would be another verse. Uh, but again, in the Qurans that most of us are reading, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim is verse number one, and this is verse number seven. And so we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then, Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. That's really what we want. Guide us to that straight path, or really guide us on that straight path, put us on that straight path. And then, what do we mean by this straight path? What are what are the attributes that that we are after here with the straight path? Well, so it is sirat al ladina and amta alayhi. It is the path of those that you have shed your blessings upon. And again, that is when we would start thinking about those details that I talked about in the, in the, in the last verse, uh, that what does this Sirat al-Mustaqim encompass? Who are the blessed people? They're the ones who believe and do righteous deeds. They're the ones who establish prayer and give their zakah. And so put us on the path of those whom you have blessed with all of those attributes and good practices. Then, غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ Not those you are displeased with, and I'll come back and comment on this in a minute, nor those who are astray. Now, some people say that this is the definition of the path of those you have blessed. What is the path of those you have blessed? It is the path that is not uh, the one you are displeased with, and it is not the people who are astray. So if you don't fall under this category that God is displeased with you or that you've gone astray, then by definition, you are on the path of those who have been blessed. So they use the last part of the verse as a definition of the first part of the verse. What is the definition of Sirat al ladina and Amta alayhim, the path of those you have blessed? It is not being part of those who have earned your anger or your wrath or that you are displeased with, uh, nor those who are lost. I myself do not really subscribe to that. God knows best. It is part of the shade of meaning, but it's really a definition in the negative. I'm defining it by it's not this and it's not this, so that's how I'm defining it. And I myself lean more to positive definitions. And I think that um, these are simply reflections of that, that the path of those that you have blessed, and then I am sort of reiterating the request in a different way. Um, and uh, please make sure that I am not on the path uh, of those you are displeased with, or those who have gone astray. And what is the difference between al-maghdubi alayhim, those you are displeased with, and those who have gone astray? Uh, what some have said, and God knows best, is that those that God is displeased with or angry with, you will often find this translated as those who have earned your wrath or those who have earned your anger. Here it's translated those you are displeased with, uh, are those who know what is the right thing to do but simply don't do it, either out of attachment to this world, or greed, or lust, or, or ego, or whatever it may be, or laziness. You know what is right, but you decide not to do it. Then those are the people that have earned God's anger and displeasure. Then those who simply don't know the right path, uh, they are adhalin those who have gone astray, they are lost, they are off the path. It's not that they know what's right and what's wrong and have decided to pick the wrong. They have stumbled into wrong out of ignorance. So we're asking not to be 
in either of those two categories. Then the last comment is that I've always seen it translated as those you are displeased with or those you are angry with. But the Arabic doesn't really say that. It's, it says, it's not الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرَ الَّذِينَ غَضِبْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ uh, that those that you have blessed, not those you are angry with. It is not those upon whom there is anger. It, 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 is not, it does not say the ones you are angry with. It says the ones upon whom there is anger. Don't make us among those. Why is that? Well, what some of the scholars have said is that this connotes not only the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the anger of the righteous on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against those who know the truth but decide to ignore it. And so the righteous, the faithful, are angry on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or are displeased also on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so it is really a broader meaning than just they are the ones that you are angry with, and not the ones who are astray or lost. So let me stop there. Uh, but I hope that this has brought maybe some additional nuances uh, to the Fatiha. Of course, the meanings are the broad meanings are the broad meanings. But I know, as I said, for myself, that thinking about things in this detail helped me develop my own personal relationship with the Fatiha uh, so that when I pray, I am in some sense, of course, reciting the Fatiha that we all recite, but in another sense, I am reciting my Fatiha, my understanding, my conception, the interaction of the Quran with my heart and mind. And I'm not telling you that this is Exclusive. I'm not telling you this is even right. God forgive me for any mistakes or misconceptions. But I am urging that we look at the Fatiha in a way that um, we interact with it and, and have our own personal relationship with it, our own take on it, of course, constrained by the, the the broad lines of the Arabic and explanations of the scholars and so on. So I, I hope, inshallah, that this has made it maybe a little uh, more, more nuanced, more rich, more full. That is my hope. Uh, that is my desire. But of course, with God is uh, all of the uh, fulfillment of that desire rests with him and with him alone. Uh, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me and to forgive you and to accept from all of us. God bless. Take care. Assalamu alaikum.